guest, Art Mathias, and you found out the hard way yes. about this uh, because you had a snowmobile accident. Yes. Uh, what was it, 1994? 1997. 97. Tell me about it. Well, those of us who live in Alaska love our winters. When I ride in a snowmobile, I flipped it over on top of me, and I didn't understand what happened, but my right shoulder started to cramp and tremendous pain and it took eight or nine months for me to struggle through to see what had happened and understand i ended up going to several doctors mris on my shoulder nothing wrong on the shoulder another mris on my neck they discovered that in that snow machine accident that i had ruptured and fragmented discs at three levels in my neck and they said the pressure on my spinal cord was so great that i should be dead I should not be able to walk, and the only solution was surgery. And like you said, I had the elders pray for me. It didn't help. So in January of 1998, I had surgery, and they fused four vertebrae in my neck, three levels, four vertebrae, and I came out of the surgery worse than I actually went in. I was more afraid. I had more pain uh, and a different pain because everything I ate, everything I wore hurt. The, some of the cramping in my shoulder had stopped, but the pain throughout my body was intense. I went back to the surgeon, he did another MRI, he says, your neck's not very good, but it's not because of these problems. I went to neurologist because I was getting numb in my fingers and my toes, and it was spreading, and they said I had a disease called peripheral neuropathy or small fiber neuropathy, and it was gonna spread until it came up to my chest, my heart, and then I would die, and they said that would take two years. And in addition to that, you found yourself allergic to how many items? Well, I, as I figured out what was happening, I had developed over 100 allergies, and it was really the allergies that were causing the neuropathies in my fingers and my toes. I couldn't eat anything. There was only two or three different foods I could eat. Mm. Uh, clothing would make my arms burn, any synthetic clothing I was down to wearing only the most pure cottons, very expensive pure cottons, uh, magnetic fields. And in the meantime, his sister develops tumors and she starts studying an area having to do with forgiveness and gets healed. And she sends the tapes to Art. What happened? Well, I was desperate. I w in that condition, I would even listen to something that I thought was about as hokey as it could be, that my thoughts or emotions could have anything to do with what was going on in my physical body. But, I, you know, I was raised in the church, and I didn't think I had to forgive anything. But as I worked through what she taught me about what bitterness was, I learned that I had a lot of resentment and anger and unforgiveness, which are all parts of bitterness. And so I started to forgive. I didn't know how to forgive. But I started to work through. I purpose and I choose to forgive. And then there's one other verse that kept coming up, 2 Timothy 1, 7. It says, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. And I was a born-again Christian. I can't have a, a spirit. But I knew that I was controlled by all those fears of the future, the fear of the pain that I was living in every day, the fear of I couldn't eat anything. What am I going to do? And I, I can imagine that fear. Uh, it's, it, it must have... I, I mean, I imagine you almost despaired of life. I, life was so horrible. I couldn't eat anything. Everything hurt. Uh, life was hell, to be blunt, for me and my wife. Probably worse for her. But as I says, Lord, what do I do with this verse? Because I, I knew I was controlled by this spirit, this fear. So I, I just said, in the name of Jesus, I command this fear to go. And it was like 100 pounds come off my back. And it took me two or three days to figure it out, but when that spirit of fear went, so did those hundred allergies. And then my nerve endings healed, and the arm that was withered from that accident, God healed the nerves. And I was able to lift weights, and I got a normal arm back. So, are you, you see, this is what he is saying. He's saying that God wants to heal us, Absolutely. but there are blockages in the emotional area, not just forgiveness, in many areas, not just mm -hmm. fear, in many areas. And when you deal with those areas, there is just a free flow of God's healing virtue. Absolutely. God, it's his desire, it's his will to always heal. But... We look through scriptures and we find out many times he was unable to heal and he marveled at people's unbelief. 
And unbelief is really any form of disobedience. And I was very disobedient to the Lord in having anger and resentment and bitterness in me. And then we start studying how those toxic negative emotions affect our health from, from science, from uh, psychology, an area of psychology called psychoneuroimmunology, and from medical textbooks. And what medicine teaches about toxic negative emotions and then what the Bible teaches. And it's not a surprise that anger, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, and envy, rejection issues, fears, worries, anxieties cause disease. The American Medical Association says that more than 80% of all of our diseases are caused by these emotions. Jesus died for you. Jesus will save you. But you must do something. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Do it right now. Lord, thank you for the shed blood. Thank you for dying for my sin. Thank you for being willing to save me forever. I trust in you this day as my own personal Savior. Come into my heart, Jesus. Amen.